Right. Well, when I met Phil, I told him I have 101 questions, which I want covered in 20 minutes, because um, uh, I've been working for the last year with vigilante groups that were formed in uh, Tahrir Square and other protest spaces in Egypt, um, who were mostly led by men and women who had absolutely no connection with the feminist movement or women's NGOs, um, and who were doing everything that uh, femi the feminist movements and women's NGOs had failed to do in Egypt, which is to make gender issues relevant to the wider public. And um, as I worked with these vigilante groups, I found that there was a great deal of de ghettoization of women's issues happening. And um, although we did a lot of interviews with men who formed these groups, uh, as someone who hadn't worked closely uh, on this issue, I, I wanted to ask Phil 101 things about what we can learn from the Kenyan experience, uh, Megan's Kenyan experience, because um, the groups each were telling me, look, you know, we don't actually have other groups of men engaging in gender justice in Egypt that we can engage with. So I'm really excited and honored and privileged and uh, uh, happy to be able to ask the 101 questions that Andre will stop us at after 20 minutes. Uh, but first, for everyone, tell us about yourself. Um, my name is Philip Otiano. Uh, currently, I'm the executive director, Men for Gender Equality Now, an organization that is working with men and boys in Kenya towards uh, gender, gender equality, promotion of gender equality principles and uh, social justice. Um, Men for Gender Equality Now started in the year 2001 uh, from a pan-African organization movement that was basically a women's organization. And uh, the idea was really to engage men in ending violence against women at that time. So um, for, the last, uh, for the last decade we've been working with boys in schools, boys out of school and also men in, in the communities just to, uh, on issues around uh, violence against women, sexual gender based violence and also to the uh, promotion of uh, human rights principles uh, towards uh, social justice uh, society. And I think one, one of the key elements, uh, uh, I don't know whether it's right for me to even go into it as a person, when I first met the group, uh, uh, the group of men uh, at that time under feminine, was that uh, what the driving factor for me was uh, from my family level, where my father uh, actually wanted to marry off my sister, who was still in college. And that, that, that experience alone ended up in my, my mom and dad separating, uh, even after having been married for 30 years. So for me, there was already something that was uh, good about being engaged in the processes of uh, uh, fighting against gender-based violence. Which brings us to the question that when you engage with men on gender justice issues, mm -hmm. do they each have to be personally affected? Because in Egypt we found that most of the men who formed these vigilante groups had seen women comrades in Tahrir Square being assaulted, mm -hmm. either friends or sisters, or, and that's what, uh, that's what uh, triggered them. So how do you, what, you know, what does it take for that kind of personal touching or, or transformation? I think for me, uh, much as that can be the entry point for, to most men where they feel affected and they've experienced violence in some form, mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, the, the global movement around engaging men and boys, uh, really for me, from my standpoint, uh, it has lost point in terms of how do we really need to engage these men because mm -hmm. one of the things that we need to do is first and foremost to speak to men's emotional language in terms of really addressing the, point, the, the problems that men encounter, mm -hmm. the problems that they have, mm -hmm. and uh, some of the benefits that are, they will accrue as a, as a result of being engaged in this process. And not all men will really face uh, any form of violence for them to be involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, a lot of times, mm -hmm. most men are not violent. Like mm -hmm. uh, I, I said in one of the papers that I wrote for this workshop that mm -hmm. most men are not violent, but mm -hmm. even those who are not are bystanders. And that alone in itself is, is a problem, and we need to address that. Mm -hmm. So you do not necessarily have to have encountered or experienced problem to be part and parcel of this process of trying to make a, a violent-free society. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You you say that um, you have to speak a language that makes sense to them. Uh, exactly. In a part, can you give us something, an example from the context of mm -hmm. your work where Megan felt it, it made a, a meaningful difference uh, by uh, connecting in that particular way? Yeah, for instance, uh, when, when you, most of the time, most of the organization, initiatives and programs come around, 
in terms of response to violence against women. And I think that's, that, that's the wrong approach. For me, prevention is key. But uh, having said that, I think that the best that we, we, needed, we need to do, and I'll give an example of Megan, is that first and foremost, we need to get to the point where we make them understand Mm -hmm. uh, what, how violence affects them in mm -hmm. their own context. Mm -hmm. uh, that they also can become victims of violence mm -hmm. when it is perpetrated within the society. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the things that happened, uh, I'll give an example of uh, mm -hmm. a, very, a project that we did very recently with the IBS, mm -hmm. for instance, which is called the Mobilizing Men Project. Mm -hmm. And we engaged the, the, the bicycle and the, the motorcycle riders, we call mm -hmm. them in Kenya, border border. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that we told them is that, look, here are people who rape and defile uh, children, within, uh, children and women within this locality. Mm -hmm. And those children could actually be your daughters, they could actually be your sisters, they could actually be your wives. Mm -hmm. And therefore you need to get interested in this, in, uh, in trying to work ways through uh, how you can curb that form of violence within this kind of a setting. Mm -hmm. And indeed, within that area, one of the border border members, uh, before, uh, when we started the project, he, he actually said, that's nonsense, and I think, that's nothing that I, I cannot be engaged in that process. Mm. God forbid, down the, uh, a week down the line, mm. actually, the wife was raped within that locality. Mm. So he saw the sense, and actually this, this same person was very pivotal in trying to mobilize other people now to start engaging in this process. Mm. Much as you don't need to, and then it also gave us a platform of saying and telling the rest, mm. hey, look, you don't need to wait until it happens mm. before you get involved. So you'd rather prevent before it happens because it could be somebody very close to you. Mm -hmm. And we, when we look at the intersectionality of uh, sexual gender-based violence and HIV and AIDS, mm -hmm. who knows if this person raped your wife and probably they were infected in one or the other, mm -hmm. that still can come to you. Mm -hmm. So essentially what we are trying to say is that there comes a point when really you have to paint a picture for men that mm -hmm. they understand that there are more gains than, mm -hmm. uh, than, than losing in terms of when you become part and parcel of the process of ending violence in the society. And they embrace that idea when they, they look at it and they see there's something in need for me as mm. a man, mm. first and foremost. Mm. Because if you talk about like any violence against women, mm. to most men, women are on the periphery mm. and therefore they don't consider them to be anything. If you ask men in terms of uh, who are the women in your life, they will probably talk about their mothers, their sisters and their daughters. Where did the daughter come from? Mm. They have to pause. Then they realize that it came from the wife which most of the time they, they end up battling so much. Mm -hmm. And uh, in a society where we know that uh, issues of marriage and issues of wife, wife and husband is the, is the norm, especially in Kenya, you realize that men, before they even realize that a wife is a very important woman or being in their lives, mm -hmm. somebody has to really make them understand that. Mm -hmm. So you have to get to the point of making them understand who are these women in your life mm -hmm. before you even get just saying in a whole cell, uh, that, hey, look, we need to end violence against women. Mm -hmm. First, to tell the men who are the women in their lives. Do you sometimes get a response of, yes, I acknowledge there is a problem, mm -hmm. it is a social problem, we all have to care, but why are you talking about this issue? What about other issues that are affecting our society? What about poverty? What about political injustice? What about uh, what we are subjected to? Do you get this sense of, why are you focusing on this issue when there's so many other issues affecting lives? Do you get a sense, do, you, do sometimes men say, what about our problems as men? How, how do you react when, when that is the response? Or do you get that response sometimes? Yes, exactly. And uh, most of the time, that, that, that will be the first time when you get, uh, the first contact you have with men, they will always ask you, why do you have to address women's problems as opposed to addressing our problems as mm. men? And I think that's what I say, that we need to first and foremost to identify the problems that men face, the problems that men undergo mm. on their daily uh, processes. Mm. Because for instance, even in terms of violence against, men, uh, against women, uh, that's what the society sanctions. Mm -hmm. And therefore to them, they are only subscribing and ascribing to the principles of the society mm -hmm. as, this, uh, as is expected of them, the societal expectations. Mm -hmm. So when you're telling them to stop doing certain things, they look at you and they say, no, but that's the norm, that's the mm -hmm. thing that I need to do. Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you need to engage with me, first and foremost, address my issues in terms of I'm unemployed. Uh, mm -hmm. Secondly, yeah. uh, I'm living in this space where as a man, I'm, not a prov I'm no longer provided yes. in, my, in my house yes. and all those kind of things. But then that could also be a very good entry point by telling men, because most of the time when they, they uh, we are looked at as, as providers in the society, mm -hmm. and probably you are, you, your wife is working, you're not working, and therefore you look at yourself and then you start developing this inferiority complex, yes. then that to you, if you want to engage this man, could be an entry point and tell them, hey, look, your wife is working, mm -hmm. and it's not bad for them to be paying house rent, it's not bad for them to be buying food, uh, rather than uh, when they buy food, you feel, oh, now she's doing it, and now mm -hmm. she's going to offer me. Mm -hmm. And that 
essentially starts the debate around how to engage with men. Mm -hmm. But like for instance, for men, uh, for our organization, Men for Gender Equality, now, what we do is like, we engage men to talk to other men. Yes. Yeah, because that way it's easier mm -hmm. uh, based on the patriarchal systems that you yes. have. So if you're a woman and you come to, <coughs> to me about gender equality and ask you, are you being for real? Mm. You're just for a woman. <laughs> yeah. So uh, if, if it's another man who came talking to them, they, they'll start seeing sense because again, there's that space where uh, they can have what they call the man talk. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and slowly uh, but, uh, but surely they get to the point of really understanding each other mm -hmm. and being able, to, uh, be, being able to address that. But uh, in terms of their problems, I think that's why I said we really need to focus on addressing men's problems first before we bring other issues mm -hmm. of really uh, how to engage men in uh, the realization of social justice mm -hmm. in society. Going back to the idea of socialization, because mm -hmm. if you're going to create a counter socialization, mm -hmm. um, you know, some men would say, yes, I'm completely convinced uh, of what you're saying, it makes sense, mm -hmm. but I'm not going to look bad between my friends. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm, you, are, you are asking me to risk my image, mm -hmm. my status, mm -hmm. uh, my reputation mm -hmm. by acting as if I am pro-women's uh, rights, pro this, pro that. Mm -hmm. um, how, how, how do you create an enabling environment for people's community values to be transformed? so that the men who endorse gender justice do not also become victims of the system, where they become stigmatized for endorsing values that sometimes are not accepted. You see, uh, you have to get to the point of telling men uh, you are singly accountable to your problem, to anything that you do in this life. Mm. And much as the society sanctions uh, some of the things that you do as a man, and you'll be looked down upon if you don't subscribe to those principles, mm -hmm. then there's that point where, at one point in life, you will be alone. Mm -hmm. And then you, we, we are also trying to, to, to uh, get to the point of trying to make men to become role models in the society, and you can, you can model them differently, mm -hmm. just because the society sanctions this. And, and by the way, culture and all those things are uh, dynamic, they change with the time. Mm -hmm. And therefore you get to the point of telling them, hey look, uh, in, the, in the olden days this is what used to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, slowly but surely we've got to the point where this is what is happening right now. Mm -hmm. And you can be part of a, this, uh, this wonderful process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because if you create that uh, picture that they can be, you know, become the role models in the society and people will be looking upon them and they'll be, uh, their names will be in the history books as people who stood out from the crowd, mm -hmm. uh, I think men normally feel very good about that. That, hey, look, I was able to do this and something. Because for, for a man, there must be a gain, there must be a benefit mm -hmm. before they engage in something. Yes. So you have to tell them, okay, mm -hmm. if you do this, this is what is in it for you. Mm -hmm. yeah? And unless they get to the point of understanding that benefit to them individually yes. before you bring the crowd, then that's essential. And through that process, they're able to, uh, to even mobilize other people to be part of that process. And you tell them, for, for, for me, I, use, I normally tell people that even, look, even your religion mm -hmm. is part of a culture. Mm -hmm. Somebody started it. So if you subscribe to Christianity, probably Jesus started it. If you subscribe to, is, uh, to, to Islam, uh, Muhammad was there. So if Muhammad started a good thing that you believe in, why don't you start something that you will all, some people who are coming after you will believe in? Mm -hmm. And, oh, mm -hmm. there you have one man who can transform the world. In, in our previous conversation, we were talking about how in Egypt and Kenya, in both instances, the feminist movements were very uncomfortable with the rise of gender justice movements with men involved. Um, and we talked a little bit about how sometimes the feminist movement has been, um, first of all, a little bit patronizing towards gender justice movements, and secondly, has tended to homogenize men just as uh, society had tended to homogenize women, talking about women as if they're one group. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us more about that? Yeah, I, I think that's a problem that we encounter every single day, mm -hmm. that uh, men who believe in gender equality and men who uh, are not violent and are mm -hmm. really in the spaces where they, they talk against violence mm -hmm. are looked at as weaklings. Mm -hmm. yeah? And sometimes uh, even the women's movement do not really believe that men are genuinely in these processes or in these spaces mm -hmm. for, the, for the correct reasons and for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a notion that we really need to wipe out because 
Uh, we are differently affected by violence, and we, 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 we look at violence differently, and not even violence, but also gender equality, because we also know the benefits of it. And not some, some of us are not in it because we were affected by violence in any way, mm -hmm. but because we believe for a just and a, and a free society where everybody can realize their full potential mm -hmm. and equally just society. And therefore, you should not be looking at men homogeneously, mm -hmm. because men are different. Yeah? And not all men are violent. Mm -hmm. And not all men uh, subscribe to the principles and, and the, the tenets of the cultural and the social political dynamics that we have in the society. But they believe in something that if I do something right, I'm not only doing it for myself, but I'm doing it for the wider group. So uh, we, we need to move from the point of, uh, especially for the women's movement, <coughs> because I think we, we are going through that uh, a lot in, back in Kenya, and I believe in other, in other areas, parts of the world, mm -hmm. that if you're a man and you're talking about issues of gender, then you are looked at with a lot of suspicion. Mm -hmm. Here I am as Philo Tim, I don't believe I'm in this space and I will be talking about all this mm -hmm. if I had anything behind my back just, just because of resources. Mm -hmm. and, and even for my organization, sometimes I remember we've gone through a, a lengthy period of time when we did even have the donor funding, mm -hmm. but we remain faithful to the cause because we knew by the end of the day what we are doing, we are not only doing it because we need the resources, mm -hmm. but we, because we believe in a just society for all. And we, we really need to uh, get to the point of making people move forward mm -hmm. and, and believe that there are men who are in this for the right reasons and they are in it because they believe that women and men can live in a society where there is no violence.